So it's good to see all of you. It's wonderful to get, be gathered together. And I think it's very appropriate that we gather together on this, the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross. Um, in, in many ways, um, the ministry that we have as a, a part of the equestrian order of the Holy Sepulchre is uh, a ministry that's both vital, but I think also important to the church itself. Uh, and the, the three commitments that we make uh, to pray for the Holy Land, to uh, support the Holy Land, and then to visit the Holy Land. Those are very, very important to the church. Um, the community of Christians and Catholics in the Holy Land, as you know, is shrinking rapidly. And so our support is, is very needed, very much so. Um, as I was uh, uh, doing a little bit of reading uh, regarding the Holy Sepulchre itself, uh, it's, it's both a... a uh, journey in history, but it also says a lot about us as human beings. Um, it really wasn't until the fourth century that Constantine allowed a church, or actually wanted a church, to be built over the Holy Sepulchre. And it was actually a church in the round, which is unusual architecture for the day. Um, and then three centuries later, it was destroyed by the Persians. And then again, it was rebuilt, and then destroyed by the Muslims and Mohammedans, if you will, uh, and then rebuilt. Uh, and then around 1000 is when it really began to be a place uh, of constant prayer and constant worship. Um, so part of, the, part of the question of the gospel is somewhat around that church and of course our ministry itself. And um, Jesus, from the empty tomb, asking us, who do you say that I am? And that actually is a powerful question coming from a tomb. Uh, and he's, he's really saying to us in the same way as he did to the apostles, I'm calling you to faith. I'm calling you faith from the cross, but also from the empty tomb. And uh, hopefully our answer is with St. Peter saying, you are the Christ of my life. You are the anointed of my life. You are the anointed of my marriage for those of us that are married. Um, but he doesn't stop there. He goes on to actually describe what's going to happen to him. Uh, and that's actually where it draws us into faith in a big way, but it also draws us uh, into the gospel itself. Um, and he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. And he spoke this openly, the gospel says. Now, for us as human beings, it's, that's hard to compute. It really is. The disciples who had walked with him for three years, for them to really hear him say that, uh, and, and for ourselves, if we, if we say, well, if we had been there, it'd be different. Mm, have to wonder. Because it, it brings us into the moment we have now, where the Holy Land is at war, right now, at war. And people on both sides are dying in a big way. Uh, and uh, it, it becomes a moment in which we can lose hope. We can lose hope. And Jesus is really saying to us that it's really in Him that salvation happens. And so for us not to forget that he's won the victory already. Yeah, we as human beings can be in multiple wars, and we are right now, actually. 
yet the promise and the hope of salvation is in him it's not in the wars and while we need to pray for the folks and we need to pray for peace especially around the whole world Jesus draws us to this moment right here because this moment is a celebration of the gospel itself this moment is when Jesus is sacrificed by us again it's an unbloody sacrifice but it's still a, the sacrifice of his love and he literally dies on the cross at the altar again for us so that he can rise from the dead and that's actually why this altar is a sign of the empty tomb Jesus speaking to us from the Holy Sepulchre every time we gather around an altar saying to us I love you so much I gave my life for you me but also I want you to follow me into the empty tomb and that's where he comes in with whoever loses his life that's really powerful whoever wishes to save his life will lose it whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it giving our lives to him every day giving our lives to him in our for those of us that are married in our marriages uh, for those of us that are single with him directly directly and so it puts a whole different light actually on the consecration because Jesus the Jesus who talked to the disciples in this gospel is here for us the Jesus who brought salvation to the whole world who won the victory is here for us and so as we approach the altar to receive his body and blood he becomes one with us in love he becomes one with us and it's our moment to say I lose myself in you Lord as I receive communion our communion prayer I lose myself in you Lord so we offer this mass in a special way for uh, uh, partly for each of us but also in a special way for the folks of the Holy Land right now who are suffering big time and then any wars that are happening around the, the world uh, but we offered also that that uh, whoever wishes to save his life will lose it whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it mm. that's who he calls us to be let's pray for that grace <clears throat>